All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast. Once again, everybody, PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So, economic growth is dead, or rather it's going to be relatively soon. Now, the very concept of that's immediately going to be disbelieved by many, because economic growth is one of our current civilization's core central paradigms, cultural paradigms, and undergoing a paradigm collapse is typically not pleasant, so even by means of blatant denial, people in general will try to even avoid the thought of it. But unfortunately, the thing with reality is reality visits you, and it doesn't need a warrant to come through the door. Economic growth is going to be dead before 2040 or so. Back in 2019, global GDP had hit about $88 trillion. The whole onslaught of COVID and everything else that 2020 brought caused an economic contraction down to a bit under 85. Last year, it rebounded and was able to get a bit past the 88 it had been at and reached just a bit over 89 trillion. However, the onslaught of 2022 issues has already collapsed the economic growth outlook for this year from initially expecting it to grow up to between 91 or 92, most likely closer to 91, now down to only expecting it to grow by about 1 trillion or a bit less, up to either 90 or just under 90. So what are the plethora of factors behind this? Not in any particular order, we have the inevitably and eventually more rapidly crushing energy and material prices, as well as the deficits and availability strain causing those prices. As we had a nice run from the later 1800s up until about the early 2000s, nice, cheap, abundant energy, highly pressurized on land near surface oil and gas fields, awesome, readily available deposits of all the metals and minerals we wanted, and what the mining industry now looks back on as fever dream levels of ore grades, you know, with even the rare stuff like gold and silver and the platinum group metals being in deposits of such high concentration that you could literally see them as veins in the rock and constantly able to expand across the globe outwards, still finding energy and mineral resources available in such desirable ways. However, any finite resource inevitably runs into issues with peak availability, which is something we are now smashing headlong into. In other words, to save time with the explanation, you can only get so much of something so quickly. There's only so much of any given resource out there. You can only dig up or pump up so much so quickly. And as you race to try to stall that off and maintain your current availability levels, or even keep growing your resource availability levels, you find you're only able to do so by resorting to less and less desirable forms of that resource much more expensive energy intensive and their greater expense to attain pushes prices up in and of themselves then once you pass peak availability points you then have less and less available so this is a pretty big factor that is going to be compiling into things as it doesn't stop at just your energy and physical mineral and metal resources themselves remember energy is used to make and power everything, and things, everything around you, is made out of something. So energy and material resources sort of the foundation of the price pyramid, and as they get more expensive, everything else then also becomes more expensive, driving down cost effectiveness and thus revenues, resulting in on the consumer end of prices needing to be extended upwards by quite a bit, which causes, the higher the price goes, quickly decreasing purchases, which is thus another face of lost revenue, lost profit, which then also leads the stores themselves to start reducing their bulk orders of stuff, which then back on the manufacturer's end causes more reduced revenue. The losses on both ends, once they become steep enough, inevitably lead to activity reduction, which starts leading to massive job loss, which leaves less people to actually even buy the things, however expensive they are which thus results in further lost revenue, lost profit, fewer financial fuel to the economy, and from there you see that a feedback loop ensues, which then on the investor side will cause repeated episodes of confidence collapse. Confidence collapse, as you can glimpse at various times throughout history, thus results in everyone trying to pull their money. And when everyone tries to pull their money in large enough amounts fast enough, that tends to cause industries and businesses to go under, 
which then causes further even more massive job loss, which obviously then implies further less people buying less stuff. Now in any frame of reference this feedback loop gravity drop isn't infinite. It will have bottom out levels, sort of trampoline floors that it hits and rebounds from repeatedly. However the current phase of economic history we're entering into is not going to be one of returning completely to quote-unquote economic normal. Now with another factor to all this somewhat also related to everything we just mentioned, is inevitable failure and breakdown of various types of infrastructure from a combination of governments being unable to afford its upkeep or continued expansion because of the increase in prices or, or rather and or, having reduced revenue because of reduced taxes from their buckling GDP numbers as this plays out, as well as even repeating damage from both civil unrest that a lot of this tends to result in as well as also increasing degrees of environmental and disaster damage, as depending on what region you're in, drought conditions, heat waves, wildfires, storms, flooding, every natural catastrophic source of damage continues getting worse. And not only that, but also the cleanup recovery and rebuilding efforts become less and less effective as they become more expensive. And sad localized failures and breakdowns and degradation in whatever area they occur will thus obviously drag down any form of economic activity in said area, which will feed into the overall grand price scheme of everything, and at least for businesses in that area will result in investor confidence collapse, and thus the cycle continues to reinforce itself. And thirdly, in some countries worse than others, or some regions overall worse than others, we have the whole demographic collapsation issue, where you have a number of countries and regions particularly ones with extremely high income populations. Several have populations that are already declining, some are more flat, but irrelevant to the total number at hand. What's important is that are getting narrow very fast, which is a key factor that these two oncoming decades, particularly is when it's really going to start hitting hard, as the lower midsection of population pyramids, particularly that 20 to 40 or 20 to 50 range. Usually it's referred to as the working age range. However, what it ultimately is, is the active spending age range. As the time frame during life when people are working and earning money is thus obviously kind of the time frame where they actually spend money. And even between 40 and 50, that starts to decrease pretty quickly. So as that age bracket shrinks, and in some cases, especially East Asian nations, shrinks rather rapidly, that presents an inevitable harsh contraction in terms of purchases and spending amounts, which thus results in economic reduction overall. Combine that with the fact that this shrinking baseload of spending age people is also going to be spending and producing less economic drive than their prior equivalent generations anyways, because they are rapidly going to be able to afford less overall. And so thus you get hit with a one-two combo, plus the everything else combo, and all the factors keep spiraling down the drain with each other in the ever-increasing cyclonic feedback loop. Throw in a mix of all the various disruptions from the inevitable chaos and different wars that we all know are coming, some related to all these, some completely unrelated, and add in the second part of that mix in the form of the much lower income rising nations not having any hope of somehow compensating for the flatlining and eventual declining economies because many of them are going to face their own population issues actually and complete economic instability brought on by the results and inavailability of everything else which is going to lead them to buckling governments and internal chaos, mass famine, disease, and starvation from disruption of everything, and all kinds of what have you. But this is ultimately where it was all heading, as infinite growth, infinite expansion is not any kind of sustainable paradigm in any framework other than delusional fantasy. I know some people might try to argue the whole services economy transition angle, but that doesn't actually change anything. That's literally just outsourcing. Energy, materials, things are still being used. All the service is, is you having somebody else do it instead of you, so you don't have to do it. The stuff is still being used, the thing is still being done, it's just not you doing it in this case. But whatever, that's it for this one, so thank everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. Support me through PayPal, Patreon if you want, both links are down there. Only do so if you actually can. Go subscribe to my Catch channel for way less depressing content. 
no matter what happens or whatever becomes of me, may God bless and protect you all, and I will see you all around next time.